Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. All right. We're talking about uh, healing for everybody. We, we've t- talked about this subject more than once. We'll continue talking about it. When you, when you minister on healing, there's only so many things you can keep c- covering, you know, or different ways you can come at it. So we just go at it and get people blessed. Amen. Got two amens. Can I get third? Can I get fourth? Can I get fourth? All right. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this service. We thank you for uh, either bringing revelation or refreshing revelation within our lives. Thank you that your spirit is with us as we go forth and minister on the subject of healing. And uh, that people who hear and receive will be blessed in their bodies. In Jesus' name, amen. I always like to start out with Psalm 103, verses uh, 1 through 4. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name and, for, and forget and bless the Lord on my soul and forget not. You know, if we can forget not, then we can uh, forget. The reason we're told to forget not is, is because we can forget. And um, so forget not all his benefits. And the benefits are who heal, forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies hallelujah then third john he says beloved i pray above now wish is is really in the greek pray Uh, i pray above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers so we know from the word of god it is god's desire benefit of god is to be healed john uh wrote and said that he prayed above everything they would prosper, be in health, even as their soul prospers. In other words, not in place of your growth in God, but in, in relationship to your growth in God, he prayed that you would prosper and be in health. Can you say amen? amen? The more you know the character of the Father, the more you know the Father, the more you know about the Father and his plan of redemption, you know he wants people well. Everybody say he wants people well. He wants them healed. He wants them saved. He wants them delivered from sickness. He wants them delivered from uh, sin. He wants them delivered from the things of the world. He wants them delivered into his kingdom. And he wants us to walk in the benefits of that redemption. Glory be to God. Now, um, Dad Hagen used to preach a sermon a number of years ago. Uh, he, he used to call it uh, Forgiveness and Healing, God's Double Cure. And, and when you look through the Bible along the lines of subject of healing and forgiveness, you'll see there's a lot of scriptures where they both go hand in hand. And um, so God wants humanity well just as much as he wants them saved. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And, and one reason we know this is because the same sacrifice that took our sin is the same sacrifice that took our sicknesses. God deemed it as important, so important to him that at the same time he, Jesus was becoming sin for us, he was also becoming sick for us. He bore our sicknesses and carried our diseases. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Um, we see from, look, look at uh, Isaiah 53. I was going to go to that, uh, Matthew 8 first. We'll go to Isaiah 53. Glory to God. We're going to have to pray for everybody. This, uh, this time change, when it gets darker, it says mess folk up. <laughs> They think it's 3 o'clock in the morning. It's supposed to go to bed. No, it's only, it's only 6.37. It's not that late. Isaiah 55. And it's been a month. I said 55, 53 verses, verses um, 1. <laughs> Who hath believed thy report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and we, uh, we should see him and there is no beauty that we should desire him. Let's just stop there real quick. Everybody who thinks, see, this is the problem with people. They, they're, they're so market-driven now that if you've got, you got the cool look, if you've got the slick look, if you've got the, you know, the, you're the hip guy, you're wearing skinny jeans with bedhead um, and tats and, and T-shirts and, you know, holes in your jeans and all this kind of stuff, people love you because you're cool. Yet the Bible says of Jesus, there was no form, no comeliness, amen, that we should, you know, no, uh, no form, no comeliness, and we shall, we shall see him. There is no beauty that we should desire him. In other words, his outward appearance didn't draw people to him. It was not the look he had that drew people to him. We have a whole, you know, we had a generation of the power tie. I remember back when you, you had to have the power tie. 
You know, you, you had, the right, had the right tie. It was the power tie of the month. It was back when, this, back when this, uh, we start, first started using a lot of technology, and, and one guy had a satellite Bible school and a satellite network every month. He had a seminar with all the Word of Faith guys. And whatever tie that guy that was doing this wore one month, next month, everybody that was in his group had that same tie because it was the power tie of the month. You know, your power tie won't do anything. It won't heal a gnat's wing. And, and if you want to heal a gnat's wing, I, I have problems with you. Anybody ever get aggravated with gnats? Oh, my. Now, some of, this, some of the newer generation don't go outside enough to know about gnats. They're inside in the air conditioning. Back in the, there was a day that we didn't have air conditioning. Remember, we had one, my mom and dad had one in their bedroom. They put a window unit in. Then they put another window unit in, 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 in the, in the uh, family room, dining room area, and the rest of the house just suffered. I'd get up in the middle of the night, take my pillow up there and put it over the, over the thing and just get the pillow real cold and run back in and hope I could fall asleep before it got hot again. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my. Yeah. It was really, you know. And uh, we had three boys and one girl. The one girl got a bed by herself. The three boys had to sleep together. You know, you're talking about hot. So if you want to save Nat, say, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm having a problem with you. Anyway, your power tie won't heal anything. Now, see, there was no form of comeliness. They saw him. There was no beauty they should desire him. In other words, he wasn't the, the GQ debonair uh, charismatic looking guy that everybody just fell after, you know. Oh, he can wear skinny jeans and, and, and bedhead, and he can wear, you know, the cool shirt, and he can have tattoos and gauges and whatever, you know, and he, can, he just looks really cool. He's slick. We like him because he's hip. Jesus wasn't hip. Everybody say, Jesus wasn't hip. He wasn't hip. As a matter of fact, it says he had no beauty that we should even desire him. So they didn't look at him and go, oh, man, he's a good-looking. I'm following him because he's good-looking. The Bible made it clear. All right? Then it says he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. We hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and rejected of men, and we esteemed him not. I mean, he was despised, and, I'm sorry, he was despised, and we seen. I went ahead and quoted read another part of another verse, didn't I? Just threw it in there. Um, Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. We did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Amen. Um, the word sorrows can be translated grief. The word grief can be better translated from the Hebrew sicknesses. Uh, did I get in the backwards, Bill? I got, my, I got a new Bible. I didn't write it down. One, one mean, the, the words grief and sorrows are, are better translated sorrows in sicknesses. He carried, surely hath borne our sicknesses and carried our sorrows. Amen? Hallelujah. He was bruised for our iniquities. Glory to God. Chastisement of our peace was upon him. Glory be to God. Amen. With his stripes, we are healed. We are healed by the stripes of Jesus. So here we have Isaiah 53 saying, with his stripes, we are healed. Now, we quote from 1 Peter 2.24 in conjunction with this, who his own self bear our sin and his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin shall live unto righteousness by whose stripes we are healed. Now, Isaiah said uh, we are healed. Peter says we were healed. I should have misquoted that. We, we were healed, 1 Peter. And, if, you know, and you had a lot of people come up with things like, well, that means sp the, the spiritual sickness of, uh, of sin. The spiritual sickness of sin. And if we didn't have Matthew 8, they could probably get away with it. But because we have Matthew 8, they can't get away with that one. See, people are always trying to over-spiritualize stuff or, or try, try, you know, you know, you're supposed to try to interpret the Bible literally, and if you can't, then you go to other things. Like the trees of the field clap their hands. Well, the trees are not literally clapping their hands. It's figurative speaking. Okay? But when it says by a strike she were healed, you don't try to get figurative with that. Because we, we have Matthew 8, verse 16, so when even was come... They brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. He didn't say he forgave anybody. He healed all that were sick. Now, I would, I would not doubt that he was saying, you know, your sins are forgiven. I, 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 you know, he did that to, to the woman. He did that in other places. But uh, here he, we have specifically written, he cast out the spirits, the devils, with his word, and he healed all that were sick. How many did he heal? All, all who? All that were there. People on the other side of the planet didn't get an, a Holy Ghost email and say you're healed because Jesus just said so. 
just had to put that little jab in there. Amen. Y'all here? This is that it might be fulfilled by that which was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. And so Jesus healed the sick. His healing of the sick is in, in, in relation to the prophecy that he would bear our sicknesses with the stripes on his back. Jesus, say this, Jesus is the healer. He's the Savior also. See, he saves us from our sin. He saves us from destruction. He saves us from, he is our Savior. I, you know, the four square church, you've been, if you've ever heard of the four square denomination, uh, their four squares were, you know, they were, they were really blocks, you know, four blocks of, of the foundation of their, of their uh, denomination. Jesus the Savior, Jesus the Healer, uh, Jesus, oh gosh, soon coming King, and, and Jesus... Jeff, the baptizer in the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jerry. I just went totally blank. Jesus, our Savior. Jesus, our baptizer in the Holy Ghost. Jesus, our healer. And Jesus, our soon coming king. That was the four square. That was the four squares. That the four square foundation blocks of their denomination. Okay? Jesus is our Savior. Jesus baptizes us with the Holy Ghost. Jesus is our healer. Amen? Hallelujah. And so, we find from 1 Peter 2, 24, Isaiah 53, 3, uh, 3 through 5, and Matthew 8, 16, and 17, that the stripes that Jesus bore, by whose stripes we are healed, were for the healing of our bodies. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20 says, What? Know you not your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which, is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own, for you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, what? Which are gods amen we're not required to choose between our bodies and our spirits Jesus has made a provision for both you know there's got a lot of people well I'm just glad I'm saved I'll be sick it don't matter if I'm sick or not I'm just glad I'm saved well I'm glad you're saved too but you don't have to choose you can have both and I said you can have both you don't have to have one or the other I'm glad it's not a one or another proposition. I'm glad he didn't say, well, I'll heal your body, but you're going to go to hell, or you can get saved in your spirit and be sick in your body and go to heaven. I'm glad it ain't that way. I'm glad that the benefit is he forgives all my iniquities and heals all my diseases. I'm glad that 1 Peter 2, 24 said that he bore my sin on his cross on the tree, that then we're being dead to sin, should live under... Uh, um, <laughs> Glory, I, when I try to paraphrase, I mess up whose own self bear our, his, bear our sin and his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. You can only paraphrase and you get yourself in trouble. Especially when you've ingrained it for so long. I was trying to get to that quicker than I should have. Sometimes we want to get ahead. We'll go ahead and take care of stuff and get, get down the road there. <clears throat> but we see, uh, you know, and then James, think about James. Is there any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. And then when they got there, it says this, who, who, and let them anoint them with oil, and the prayer of faith shall what? Save, Save the sick. Or now, Greek should be so, is sozo there, so it should have really been translated heal the sick. Sozo can be healed or saved depending on what the context is. Was there any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Amen. And, isn't that right? And the prayer of faith shall sozo, heal the sick. The Lord shall raise him up. Listen to the next part. And if he's committed any sin... They'll be forgiven him. They go hand in hand. God forgives and God heals. It goes hand in hand all the time throughout Scripture. There's a lot of people that because the, one of the reasons they're not healed is because they're walking in sin. They need to get that sin out of the way and they'll get healed. Let me give you an example. Dad Hagen, uh, back, uh, oh, <clears throat> um, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm trying to think if it was the right after I left or right before I, you know, the year before I came or the year after I came to Ramah. They, you know, uh, if you know anything about them, back, back even back then when they got that campus, but they, they started a healing school, kind of a healing clinic. And what they were doing, now back then, Dad would teach, if he was in town, he would teach it. And um, so, you know, I'd go, we'd go, I'd go visit just to hear him teach on healing. And um, been there when he taught on death. Been sitting right there when he taught on death. Wow, because people there were, the people, the people there were incurable diseases. And they weren't going to get it. So he would talk, start talking about death and heaven and stuff. 
You know, what, what? the Holy Ghost is going to minister to the person where they were. They won't go anywhere. They won't get anything. Just brought a peace to them about, about going home with the Lord. Now, the plan was to get them well. But see, people don't hook up in faith. They, you know, there's things that can't be done just because, they, because they're not in faith. A number of years ago, we had somebody in our church that was dealing with some cancer. And uh, we, we raised money for the church to so send them out there to stay and to stay and go to healing school. And they didn't stay for a few days and left. I thought, oh, my, 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 my. Here's the answer right here. I said, here's your answer right here. If you just, if you just could have stayed, if you just could have stayed and sat in that atmosphere, sat under that word long enough. So, um, but they had, they had uh, one day his dad was teaching and, and he got off on the subject of forgiving. Well, what's that got to do with healing? Well, you'll hear it in the story. You'll find out. Hello. And uh, got to teach it on forgiveness, walking in forgiveness. You know, unforgiveness will, will hinder you from receiving from God. Now, we teach people, you know, if you've got enough faith, you can get this. Yeah, if you've got enough faith to do this, but faith without love won't work. As a matter of fact, for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision avails anything, nor uncircumcision avails anything, but faith which worketh by love. See, you get out of the walk, get out, see, unforgiveness is not walking in love. Just, ain't no way all the way around it. If, you, if you're in unforgiveness, you're not walking in love. Say, ouch. Come on now. <clears throat> well, anyway, across from Ramah, back in those days, and see, the student housing was there, but, you know, they bought it the year I was, about halfway through that year I was there, they bought those apartment buildings. They were old then, you think they're old then, they're old now. That was 1980 when I got out there, so that's 30, 34 years ago. They were, they were 20, 25 years old then. Some old apartments. They got big old cracks, and the girls stayed out there. You could slide, the, the girls next to them in the other apartment, they could slide notes back and forth under the wall because the, 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 the concrete had settled in the, in the footers were going across there for the wall, and they could just slide notes back and forth under the wall. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. <clears throat> anyway, but right next to that was a, was a Monterey house. Now, Tex-Mex. Now, you understand Tex-Mex in North Carolina, Tex-Mex in Oklahoma and Texas and stuff is different. What do you mean? It's hotter. And um, this woman was in the service. And Dad hanging out talking on uh, how the unforgiveness can block you from receiving from God. Now, what had happened to her, she had been gone in for an operation and they had accidentally slit her esophagus in the operation. She couldn't eat uh, whole food. She could only do, she was on a liquid diet. She couldn't swallow solid food. And for um, over two years, she'd been on a liquid diet. And she was sitting out there in the, in the middle of that service. And as soon as they dismissed, because he got preaching about forgiving people and you know, being a block, the Spirit of God dealt with her about something. She got out and ran across the street. There's a pay phone there. Dave, this is before cell phone day. Bag phone, every other kind of phone, except the wall phone and, and quarters. All right? And they picked up the phone and called her brother up in the northeast somewhere and said, I want you to forgive me. And they got to talk. They couldn't even remember what they'd had a falling out about. Like 30 years before, they had a falling out, hadn't talked to each other in decades. I want you to forgive me. And he said, oh, sis, I, I forgive you. And they could, they could not remember what it was they'd fallen out over. Now, ain't that stupid? Carrying a grudge and walking in unforgiveness all those years over something you can't even remember what it was. How stupid can that be? So anyway, while she's on the phones, she got healed. As a matter of fact, she, she knew something happened in her body. She was healed. Went, got off the phone. They made plans to meet up, get together, you know, kind of, you know, uh, see each other. And she got off the phone, got, in, got, got healed. What, what was, see, that unforgiveness was blocking it. Went in and ate two Mexican meals mm. on a stomach that hadn't had real food in two years, only a liquid diet. Well, what happened? See, she got out, she got into forgiveness, see? Who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. See, you get over there and get into, the, get, into get, in, get out of sin or get out of unforgiveness. And sometimes that's just what's blocking you from receiving. Not always. But I'll tell you what, if you're, if you're uh, asking God for things, uh, particularly in the realm of healing, and you're not getting any answers, start checking up on your love. Dad, Dad Hagen used to say that all the time. He said, if I pray and I don't get answers, I start checking up the first place I check. Now, that's not always the answer. But the first place I check is my love walk. Because that's the easiest place to get out in, in the sin in as a Christian, is in your love walk. 
Amen. Our churches would be better if people would just walk in love. Amen. Instead of getting mad at the pastor because he didn't do something or he did this or he didn't do what you thought he should have done. Getting all disgruntled and mad and, fit and, and fighting and, you know, and everything else. And didn't, he didn't come do this fast enough, didn't reach out fast enough, didn't do this. Get, you're getting into unforgiveness, you're getting out of love. Amen. So, well, that's love. I know other areas. We had somebody one time, they were trying to buy something. <clears throat> but they were living in a, in a uh, sexual sin. You couldn't talk to them about the sexual sin because they think God made them that way. And then they want to know why, how come God didn't come through. They knew they were in faith. Because you're living in sin. You see? You got to get out of sin. Amen. Let God work in your life. See, so many times, many times, not, see, not always. You can't, you can't tell yourself anything good blind. Well, if somebody's sick, because you know, remember the disciples came to Jesus one day and said, who committed the sin? His parents or him that he's in this state? And Jesus said, neither. Amen. So we, we, get into, we get into these things, but at the same time, when we're, I mean, people say, I know I'm in faith. I know I believe God, but it's not working. He's not doing, no, 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 no. It's not that he's not doing anything. You need to start checking out some of these other areas if that's what's going on. Check out and make sure your love walks right. Make sure there's no secret sin. Everybody say secret sin. What's a secret sin? One you and God know about. And you ain't telling nobody. You ain't even talking to him about it. That's secret. Now don't think he don't know about it, but you just, he, he knows about it, but you ain't talking to him about it. All right? Get rid of those things. Why? Because healing and forgiveness go hand in hand. You can, you can be in a place where you're, the only thing keeping you from getting, receiving what you need from God in the realm of health and healing is getting something right. Glory to God. Get that right and boom. It's, it's, it's been waiting all along. You've just been blocking it up. Anybody ever had anybody ever a toilet clogged? Yeah. You know, something got in there and clogged it up. You know, you can feel right up to the rim. And you're pulling the top off, pulling the plunger up, flap, putting the flapper down, doing everything you know to keep it from getting any more in there. And you go take that plunger, go, and then all of a sudden that, that whatever's blocking it up, whoosh, just, I mean, the, 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 the way it's made, it's designed that when enough water gets in, it pushes it over the gooseneck. By, by, just by the force of the water, pushes everything over the gooseneck and runs out through the pipes. If it gets clogged up, it won't run. You get clogged up in, in sin or unforgiveness, things like that, and, and God's power won't flow to you right. You know, you, you've, you've clogged it up. But as soon as you get that cleared, everything just, just runs right on out. Power, God's power, God's mercy, all the healing just runs right in. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Now remember, um, I'm off my notes now, by the way, just in case you were wondering. Uh, there was a certain day that Jesus went into a house and all the lawyers and doctors of the law from every town around about were there. And the Bible says, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. And remember that? Yeah. And they came, and, and people came, four guys came with a stretcher, with a guy on the stretcher, who was impotent in his feet. Amen. Now remember that, the power was that present to heal them. They didn't, not, not a single one in that room where it says this got healed. Okay? But they, they, came, they came in and found, and they couldn't get in the room. They brought their buddy to get healed and they couldn't even get him in there. What did they do? They climbed up on the roof and ripped off the roof and dropped him down in the midst. I mean, these guys, you must have been prepared. They had to have ropes or something to get him down in there. Got him down in there. And the Bible says when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto him, the sick of the palsy, he said, uh, rise, take up that bed and walk. Or no, no, that's not, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He said, he said to him, he said, thy sins be forgiven thee. And they began to uh, reason within themselves, who can forgive sins but God alone? And Jesus had an amazing statement in response to that. Jesus said that you, uh, which is easier? What is, which is easier to say this? Your sins be forgiven you or rise up and walk. And then he really makes an amazing statement. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins 
He said to the sick of the palsy, I say unto you, rise, take up your bed and walk. Take up the house and go into your own house. And he immediately rose up and walked. Now Jesus said the proof that he had power to forgive sins was he healed the sick. How can that prove that? Because it's the same anointing and the same power just manifest in a different arena. And ultimately the same sacrifice that bore the sickness and carried the sin. Think about that. Jesus said the proof that I can forgive sins is be healed. Because it's God's anointed plan of salvation. One's a spiritual realm, one's in the physical realm. See, sickness is the, is the evil offspring of its spiritual father, sin. The nature of sin. Now, not that you sin necessarily. Now, we, said, we talked about that. <clears throat> there might be sin in your life, and you get that cleared up. But it came into the earth because of sin. Sickness was not here before the fall of Adam. Sin perverted man's spirit, which then permitted the body of man to be perverted. See, sickness is a perversion of the design of God's, God for your body. Your body is not designed to be sick. As a matter of fact, it's designed to heal itself. Hello? It's designed to run sickness and disease off from it. But because of the fall of man, that, that uh, response in the body has been perverted and it doesn't always work properly. Or Satan is, creates more and more evil diseases. But not without man's help. Amen. There's a lot of diseases people have had just because they were living in perversion. We can go back to the, the Spaniards and going into South America. They got into bestiality and we, we, we got a, a, a STD out of that that plagues humanity to this day. Uh, not amen, but the Lord help us. But sin opened the door because the spiritual laws are higher when man's spirit became spiritually separated from God and subject to sin and the nature of Satan's kingdom, his body became so. So Jesus came. He's the redeemer of the spirit and the body. Amen. And so he said that you may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. He saith unto the sick of the palsy, I say, take up thy couch, uh, rise, take up thy couch and go into thine own house. And you know what? The said they just wondered at his gracious. They just sit there and, oh. We've seen strange things today. Well, bozo, you could have got in on the strange things if you just had some faith. Because the power of the Lord is present to heal them all. That's what it says back in the beginning. <clears throat> the power of the Lord is present to heal. That's before this guy showed up. The power of the Lord is present to heal them that were there. But none of them got healed. None of them got healed. Why? Because they're getting, getting faith. Man, after, that, after Jesus healed the guy on the couch, they could all, whoa, I, I got it. It's here, it's mine. They were so messed up about the fact he said, forget your sins are forgiven you. People missed out on a lot of stuff with, with Jesus because they got offended at things he said. You know, one day he got up and said, if you eat my flesh, drink my blood, you have no part of me. And everybody but the 12 took off. I mean, they hit the road jack and didn't look back no more. Are you here? I mean, they packed it up and turned it in. And Jesus said, look at the disciples, will you leave also? And he said, we ain't got nowhere else to go. Amen. Glory to God. So sickness and disease, uh, sin and sickness are carried by the same sacrifice. I always mean, say glory. You don't have to choose between your body. Uh, God's will that we be saved and be healed. Jesus said in John 6, 38, I came down not from heaven to do my will, but the will of him that sent me. Think about the ministry of Jesus. Went round about the villages, teaching in their synagogues. Amen. Preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness among the people. Can you say amen to that? Why? Because that was the will of God. That was the plan of God. That was the purpose of God. Somebody say glory. glory. Amen. Now, remember uh, when Jesus came to the place <clears throat> and he said, and, and um, the Bible says this. He said that he could there do no mighty work. 
Say he laid his hand on a few sick folk and healed them. Now, actually, the Greeks said sickly folk. People with minor ailments, one translation, Mark over Mark 6, 5. And healed them. But you know what it goes on says after that? It says, and he went around about the villages teaching. Why? The only way to undo their unbelief. And it actually says after this, it says, and he marveled because of their unbelief. He marveled because of their unbelief. He went about the villages teaching. Why did he go about the villages teaching? He had to undo, undo their unbelief. See, if our churches in America taught what we, we were able to go teach in other countries, I'll tell you what, sometimes it's just it's so easy to get people healed and, and receive in another country where they hadn't, been, hadn't had so much gospel or teaching against things. I, I remember when I was um, first going over into Europe and traveling, one of the things they told me was don't carry a Copeland Bible or a Hagen Bible. Because people had gone around and told people that they had, because they put study notes in it, you know, just like a Cambridge study Bible or a Jerry Falwell study Bible. Jerry Falwell had a study Bible. And he would, he would tell you what page he was on that day. I remember you used to listen to, you know, uh, Jerry Falwell, Thomas Rhodes Baptist Church up in, uh, you know, uh, Lynchburg, Virginia. And Brother Jerry would get on there and he, you know, if you give so much money to the ministry, he'll send you his, his study Bible and everything else with his notes in it and all that. <coughs> and then when he preached the sermons, he would tell you what page to turn to. Because everybody's supposed to have his Bible. Which is fine, you know, and then Copeland had a study Bible, and, you know, Hagen had a study Bible, and different people have had study Bibles, and then, then you know, printing presses print the Cambridge study Bible. It doesn't have everybody's personal notes in it, you know. And, but these people go around Europe and, and say, well, give them that scripture. If any man adds to this or takes away from it, let it be a curse and ethmia, and then take the Hagen or Copeland. See, see they put their, they've changed the Bible. They've added these things to it. And everybody just say that's dumb on steroids. Almost as dumb as what I heard today. I, I just got to throw this in. I know it's not part of my sermon. But how many, how many know who Darius Rucker is? He's an African-American country singer. That's not an oxymoron. He sings country. Okay? Well, up at the tree lighting service, in, uh, or service or event in New York City, he was, he was scheduled, and he was singing White Christmas. And the protesters from all of these things have been going on we're over there protesting him and trying to shut him down because he was singing a racist song about Christmas being white. It's for white people. And that's about as dumb as Hagen and Copeland had into the Bible. Maybe dumber. Yeah. So they were, they were protesting, trying to keep him from being able to sing White Christmas because it was a racist song. You say you can't fix stupid. You got to get saved. God's got, we can't fix that kind of stupid. God's got to fix it. Yeah, He's, he was singing a racist song. It was written by a Jew. <laughs> Irvin Berlin wrote the song. He's a Jew. And he wrote about Christmas being snow. Oh, dreaming of a... Boy, I'd love to have one too. Anyway. He wasn't talking about honky Christmas. He talking about a snow Christmas. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, anyway. I know y'all love me. No, I'm, I, I, just, I just think stupid is stupid. I don't care where it came from. That's exactly right, Janice. No matter what, stupid is stupid. Four said stupid is stupid does. Anyway, where was I? Oh. Janice ain't going to be right. She goes, you have to <laughs> Go check it out. It's on the internet. <clears throat> now, so Jesus went around by the village just teaching to undo the other. Now, I know I got y'all so messed up, you can't even get back. Get back over here. They're just some dumb folks out there. And they vote. Anyway. Did I lose the whole service just then? <laughs> Pretty much lost it. All right, let's get it back. Glory to God. Uh, when we, when we understand that Jesus went to heal everybody and that, you know, sickness and healing or, or sickness and sin are covered by the same sacrifice, then we can begin to understand how, you know, uh, how much easier it is to receive. Remember, Jesus said this, which is easier? Thy sins be forgiven or rise, take up your couch or, or be healed. Which one's easier to say? Inferring that neither one was easier to say than the other. You can be healed just as fast as you can be saved. I, I, I personally think that what we have is we have more 
mental blocks with healing because we feel the pain. Or we see, the, we see the effects in our bodies than sin because we, can we, you know, we can't physically see that. We can't physically, there's not a sense in our body that can tell us about sin. Now it can read the repercussions of the sin, but you can't, you can't go, uh, I know that sin's gone because I don't have a lump anymore, I don't have a cut anymore, I'm, you know, my uh, head doesn't feel like it's about to explode. It's a spiritual thing. It is a spiritual thing. And I think sometimes that's where people get in trouble is because they get so carnally minded. That's why we become spiritually minded and not carnally minded because our carnal minds will get in the way. They're enmity, remember, they're enmity against God. Not subject to the laws of God, neither indeed can be. What are the laws of God? Number one of the things, one of the main laws of God is we walk by faith. And not by sight. Or not by our physical senses. So we're to live out of the law of faith and not the law of senses. Amen. Your senses will tell you one thing, the Bible tells you another, and faith will tell you another. And we have to, we have to get into operation and do something about that. Well, Jesus said it's just as easy to get somebody healed as it is to get them saved. Why don't we see more of it? One thing, bad teaching. I said bad teaching. Dumb teaching. Or no teaching. Dumb teaching, no teaching, or bad teaching. You got all three of them. You know, people say, well, God's trying to teach you something. I've seen people die and never know what it was he's trying to, and that's a bad teacher. Now, let me just share this, you know, um, our son just had an exam last week at his school. Everybody in the class flunked the final. He came home, I'm telling you, looked like Eeyore with, you know, the Atlas world on his shoulders. You know, because, you know, he, he just stressed because, you know, he knows his scholarships are tied to how he does on his, his classes and stuff. And if he drops a little certain GPA, he loses his scholarships. And he knows that. So he gets, we get him through this year with scholarships. The, the, next year don't matter. <laughs> it just doesn't matter because uh, you don't get put on probation until after the end of the year. So we get him through the next spring. He's cool. And he's been, he's been doing really good. But um, he came in, boy, he was just like the world with the weight with the world's on his shoulder. He was, he's about, about halfway freaked out. He had juries to do. He's got juries tomorrow for his vocals. He's got juries on Tuesday. And um, on one of his other exams, uh, he used the wrong hand to play the chords. And so he's got to come back and do it with the right, correct hand uh, to make that up, which he knows what he just, he just used the wrong hand. And you got to do the right hand and the right fingers in piano proficiency. He's self-taught, so he, play, he just he uses the wrong fingers. He's having to retrain himself to use the correct fingers. He got in that class and used the wrong one. So he's, he's talking about the weight of the world on his shoulders, man. You know? Well, because everybody in the class flunked, it meant what? They didn't understand. Now, the, the teacher sent an email out the next day. I've curved. I put in a curve, a major curve, and everybody passed. He, you know, because if everybody flunked, that means something wasn't right. He said, now, we're going to be working on these things because they got to take the same guy with the next class up next semester. And so he says, the first part of the semester, we're going to be working on these over and over and over and over and over and over and over until you get it. And then we'll, we'll finish up. We'll, we'll get through the rest of the material, but you're going to make sure you have this because he really can't move along with these group until they get it. They got to get it. And so, but you know what? They put it in, put it in a big curve, and so now they're going to reteach it and just drill it until they get it. There's a lot of people, because of either bad teaching, erroneous teaching, or no teaching, don't know God wants them well. Not that he can make them well. He wants them well and made provision for their health and healing. Amen? So what did Jesus do when he could there do no mighty work, say he's laid his hand on a few sickly folk or with minor ailments as the, the Greek would bear out. A few folks with minor ailments and healed them. He, went, he marveled because of the unbelief. That messed up. I mean, Jesus marveled twice. At the unbelief of the covenant people and at the faith of the non-covenant people. They didn't have a right to it. They got in faith in God. They had a right to it and couldn't get faith to get it. Amen. So what did he do? He went around about the villages teaching. The way to fix it, the way to fix where they were, the way to fix their unbelief, the way to fix what they couldn't understand was to teach them what the scripture said. 
Now I challenge, if you're watching this on the internet, on our YouTube, uh, if, you, if you subscribe to our YouTube, if you watch this on Roku, if you're watching, however you're, you're picking up our services, I challenge you to forget all the unbelieving stuff people taught you and then look to the Bible for yourself. Yes. There's a lot of people who put mis, 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 construe and misuse Scripture to prove people are supposed to be sick. Even that scripture about the man born blind, who did sin, or this man or his parents said he was born blind. Now, the Greek doesn't have punctuation, so, you know, Jesus said neither. See what they say is, Jesus said uh, neither, but, uh, but the, the, I must work the works of him while I'm here. He basically said, because of the way they structured it, in the, in the, coming into the English, he, he may say that God made him sick so Jesus could work the works. Okay, let me, let me, now, number one, let me just go that way with you for a second. If he was, if which I don't believe, I don't believe that's what you can bear out if you study it better. If God made him sick so Jesus could work his works, the work they worked was to heal him. He got healed. Hello? So if he was some special case, God designed to be blind so that Jesus could come along and heal him, the, the bottom line is he got healed. No matter what, he got healed. So God wanted him well. Okay, I, I can't tell you the people I've run into in my course of ministry in life that are the man born blind, got Paul's thorn, and suffering like Job. And I think, my Lord, you're a special person. Paul said the abundance of the revelations brought those things. Amen? We know that Job opened the door through fear. Now, let me say something. All three of them ended up getting... Job got delivered and restored. The man born blind got healed. And Paul lived out his life until he offered himself up. He said, I'm going to trek between the two, whether to die and depart and be with the Lord, which is far better, or to remain with you in the flesh, which is better for you. So I'm going to stay here. Amen. I've been, I talked to one woman one time. We argued with her right down in front. I was, just, I was young and saved, so I was young and dumb. You, you know, I, I found out you just don't argue with stupid people. And she was telling me that God put all this on her. And God did this and God did that. And she was suffering like Job. And like the man born blind had Paul's thorn. I thought, my God, you must be a Bible scholar. You got all that and God's doing it to teach you some kind of lesson. You know, she never learned the lesson. Died in that state. And I'm not making fun of her. And you wouldn't know who she is anyway. And, he, cause, and let me say this, since it was a conversation between me and that person, nobody else ever heard it. Nobody knows that except my wife who it was. So you, you can't figure it out. Even if you watch me and know me from back then, you won't know who it was. But that woman died in that same state. Because she, she, she was holding on to her sickness that God was trying to teach her something. Never learned a lesson. I guess that means if you die with it, you never got the lesson learned. No, God's not trying to teach you anything. The devil is the author of sickness and disease. Then when God's trying to put sin on you to get you to, to learn something. There are people who believe that. God, God makes people sin so he can teach them something. Or teach them grace. Or teach them, you know, humility or something. So he makes them a prostitute. Why would God make you do what he told you not to do? And don't even bother going to Romans. You don't even know what you're talking about. Totally misinterpret it. We just covered that a while back. Amen. All right. So Jesus wants you well. Say, Jesus wants me well. Jesus wants me well. Amen. Anybody need to be prayed for? Hallelujah. All right. Glory be to God. Anybody? Hallelujah. All right. Well, stretch, stand up and stretch your hands out. We're going to pray with these prayer cloths. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the word of God. Thank you for the anointing and the Holy Ghost. We pray over these prayer cloths. Thank you that the anointing of God goes into them. Thank you that when they're laid on the sick, that they'll be made every whit whole. Thank you that the power of God will go into them and come and go into their bodies. And from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, they'll be made whole in Jesus' name. Just like the Bible says that you wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, inasmuch as anchors and aprons were taken from his body and laid on the sick and possessed, and they were healed and set free. In Jesus' name, we agree with that and say it so. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, 
P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.